So hello everyone. Welcome to the critical world of pharmacovigilance where patient safety meets drug development. Are you someone who is gearing up for the interview in this vital field or wondering what questions might come your way when you go to pharmacovigilance interview? Today we'll guide you through the most common interview questions and answers and we will provide you insights over the answer that how can it set you apart? Also, we will help you understand what are adverse drug reaction and take you through the post marketing surveillance and we have got you covered over the most important interview question so make sure that you stay tuned and subscribe to our channel as we delve into the essentials of pharmacovigilance interviews right here on our channel without wasting any further time let's start So what are we going to learn in this particular session? First and foremost, we will understand what exactly is pharmacovigilance. Then we will look into the top 10 pharmacovigilance interview questions followed by what are the perfect answers. We will also look at various pharmacovigilance positions as well as what are the salaries offered for that particular position. So it will help you to understand how you should make your career in pharmacovigilance. First and foremost, let us understand what exactly is pharmacovigilance. So as per the World Health Organization, it defines pharmacovigilance as the science and activities related to the detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse effects of any other drug related problems. Okay, so prevention, so detection, assessment, understanding and prevention. These are the four fundamental pillars of pharmacovigilance and whenever you apply that to the adverse event or any other drug related problem, it comes under the purview of pharmacovigilance. So the goal of pharmacovigilance are to bolster the patient safety concerning the use of the particular medication provided by a system which will help it to collect, assess and distribute the drug safety data and followed by the assessment. Okay, so when it comes to animal toxicology that we used in preclinical uh, trial, so animal toxicology is uh, not a very sure shot indicator or predictor of the human effects. When it comes to human system, it can react differently uh, as compared to the animal toxicology phase and evidence from clinical trial is insufficient because there are some uh, limitation because whenever you conduct a clinical trial there is limited size narrow population uh, of age uh, sex even when it comes to indication there are a very narrow disease specific indication and this particular clinical trial are conducted for short duration but when it comes to understanding the entire safety aspect or the drug safety data you require a long-term study and that is where pharmacovigilance come in it is a long-term continuous effort to ensure the drug safety data okay so that is pharmacovigilance and by using this particular pharmacovigilance system we can ensure that the accuracy of the information is communicated to the all uh, stakeholders all healthcare professional and to the patient and we ensure that the information is clearly communicated to the patient in the form of the patient information leaflet and that is up to date so if you have purchased any particular uh, medication you would get a, a leaflet or a documentation in the paper form that contains all the information about the safety pro, uh, profile of the data any uh, interaction of this drug with other particular uh, allergies or any particular safety concern that you should know about okay so that particular data comes after the pharmacovigilance process is implemented okay that is why pharmacovigilance is very critical now let us focus on top 10 pharmacovigilance interview question and answer and we'll understand what what are the particular important pharmacovigilance question and how they should be answered whenever you are at an interview So as we have seen, we have understood what exactly is pharmacovigilance. Also, we saw why pharmacovigilance is important in context of clinical trial. Okay, so there the long term safety profile, the safety data, the toxicology, the clinical trials, uh, duration, short population. So all this factor you can clearly highlight why the PV is more important in the longer context of the clinical trial. So one of the most important question that I will ask you is what are the adverse drug reaction? Okay, so adverse drug reaction is nothing but a harmful or unpleasant reaction to a medication. Such reaction can have different physical, 
psychological or emotional symptoms depending upon the severity and there are various types of adverse drug reactions such as dose related non dose related dose related and time related okay the withdrawal or failure of therapy related okay so there are types of adverse drug reaction and treatment for each of this type of drug may vary depending upon the modification of dosage okay the alternative therapy of that particular drug and whether the drug is discontinued okay so adverse drug reaction is a wider uh, field wider scope and you have to understand which particular adverse drug reaction is being reported and that is being understood by the pharmacovigilance professional next thing is they will uh, ask you that what do you exactly mean by causality okay so in pharmacovigilance context the causality is the relationship between the suspected product and the adverse drug event so if you have any particular adverse drug event reported then whether that has a clear link between the medicated product so that particular link with the suspected product is defined as causality so the next question they ask you about what are phase 4 trials when it comes to various phases of clinical trial and how is phase 4 trial closely related to pharmacovigilance activities so here you have to clearly explain in detail that various phases of the clinical trial okay and you have to explain why pharmacovigilance activities or why phase 4 is called as pharmacovigilance phase okay you have to explain the long term safety data collection and why the role of pharmacovigilance is important when it comes to adverse drug reaction uh, detection and long term safety reporting again i have uh, made a detailed video on various phases of the clinical trial you can go ahead uh, check out the link in the description and watch the entire phases so that you would clearly help di provide distinction between various phases and where the pharmacovigilance kicks in when it comes to various phases of the clinical trial The interviewer will definitely ask you uh, when it comes to uh, the regulation in India that what is PVPI. Okay, so PVPI stands for Pharmacovigilance Program of India. So it is a policy or a program launched by Ministry of Family, uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India in the year 2010 to monitor the safety of the medicine. The goal of this PVPI is to improve safety. medicine and ensure that the safety is in compliance with the safety of the subject and welfare of the indian population by monitoring the drug safety as well as reducing the risk associated with the use of medication next thing is they will ask you that when do you consider an event to be serious okay so what are the seriousness criteria so if you are a clinical research professional you would understand the sa criteria okay similar or the same are if a particular event is associated with uh, with any of the serious event it can be considered as a, a severity or the seriousness criteria so if your patient uh, is dead if he is into a life threatening condition if there is hospitalization or prolongation of hospitalization that is more than 24 hours if there is any congenital anomaly or birth defect if there is any disability if it requires any intervention to prevent the permanent damage or imp impairment or if there are any medically significant events so that easily qualifies to be a serious uh, event okay and also can be termed as an sae serious adverse event next uh, question they will ask you about uh, do you know about the types of pharmacovigilance so there are two types of pharmacovigilance activities active pharmacovigilance and passive pharmacovigilance active uh, pharmacovigilance is a proactive activity where the safety surveillance is conducted which means the measures taken to detect the adverse event okay so that is a proactive measure what is passive pharmacovigilance so passive pharmacovigilance is uh, nothing but the efforts taken okay are taken after the adverse events are being reported where there is voluntary reporting made by the healthcare professional and the uh, patients and you take a note of it and work on this particular adverse event so in active pharmacovigilance you go searching for the adverse events in passive pharmacovigilance the uh, healthcare professional and the patients report the adverse events to you okay so that is two types of pharmacovigilance and that is the distinction between those two events
so whenever you are a pharmacovigilance professional there is signal detection so they will ask you what is signal so a signal uh, consists of a reported information on a possible causal relation the relationship is not proved between the adverse drug reaction and a drug the relationship being unknown or completely undocumented previously and usually more than uh, more than a signal uh, being reported is required to generate a particular signal depending upon the seriousness of the event and the quality of the information so the primary piece of information which expresses the possible causal relationship between the adverse uh, event and the drug so that can be termed as a signal again another term they will ask you is uh, susar so suspected unexpected serious adverse event so what is the susar when it comes to pharmacovigilance so serious adverse uh, drug reaction okay so that is expected uh, for which the development uh, is uncommon or unexpected observed during the clinical trial phase for which the relationship between the experimental drug or whatever uh, it is to its comparator okay so the relationship is suspected uh, of that particular adverse event but that is uh, being reported or observed during the clinical trial okay so that is a uh, source so if you understand these are uh, the pressing pharmacovigilance questions that will help you understand that what particular situation is when it comes to pharmacovigilance and how do you tackle it So the next section is to understand what are the different position as well as what are the salaries or compensation when it comes to career in pharmacovigilance. So as you can see, I've prepared a table by researching through various pharmacovigilance professional as well as uh, various job portals and a website. So uh, there are four major positions when it comes to pharmacovigilance and depending upon your, your years of experience and your skill set, your salary ranges differ. So whenever uh, you have zero to one years of experience, you start as a fresher, as a drug safety associate and your salary ranges between three to four lakhs per annum. Once you have two to five years of experience, the position is drug safety specialist and the salary range currently is 6.5 to 8 lakhs per annum. When you become safety manager with five to eight years of experience, the salary increases from 10 to 16 lakhs per annum on an average. And finally, if you are a, a, a person who has more than 10 years of experience, so you are essentially a pharmacovigilance safety scientist. Okay. And your salary uh, ranges from 21 to 35 lakh. So if you can see this particular pharmacovigilance field has a lot of potential to make you successful uh, professional. So you can consider uh, prepare better for this particular field and consider joining it. So if you have uh, benefited uh, from this video, then please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching this video.